Okay. All right. Oh, and because people were asking, and I wouldn't be surprised if the group here are some that are very interested, uh, I will keep planning on, on streaming on Mondays uh, just for the fun of it and additionally periodically whenever. So, yes, it will happen during the summer because people were asking that. Anyways. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right. So I'm just going to go over again the merging idea. So it's really easy to merge two sorted lists into a larger list. So if I have these two numbers here, two sets of numbers that are already sorted, I'll start by comparing the smallest in each of them, which if it's sorted should be the very first thing in each of them. So obviously one is less than three. So I take the one. Then I'll move to like the next one in that second list. Or we could even imagine that like I have scribbled this away. Compare the compare them again. Well, two is less than three, so we'll take it. And we'll move on down. And of course we don't care about the two anymore. Now the three and the four, well, the three is gonna come next. So we move down on the next one. And then well, the four is gonna come next. So we move down on the second list. Five comes before seven, so there. 7 comes before 8, so there we go. And, well, this list is done. And obviously, everything remaining in this list must be, one, in order, and two, bigger than the thing that, like, the last thing in the other one. Otherwise, they would have been chosen first. So we could just jump, throw the 8, 9 on it. Awesome. So that's the principle of merging the lists, and we can do that in linear time, which is wonderful. Now, given that it's easy to merge two sorted lists, an empty list is sorted, and a list with one thing in it is sorted. This is the idea. Oh, shoot. I hate how GIFs will, like, animate, but... Just to go over this again, to, to show that it is, in fact, linear time. Like, I most I'm going to look at this thing, 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 and this thing. Right? So if this has length n and this has length m, the total number of things I'm ever going to look at is going to be like m plus n, right? And of course, I could do like, okay, well, you know, big O of n plus m or something. But of course, one of these is going to be bigger than the other or that this, the same size. So let's say that n is going to be greater than or equal to m, right? So... That means we could actually just say, well, it's 2n then, because we can, whenever doing computational complexity, we can always like round up a little bit. But of course, these are always going to be uh, similarly sized, hopefully. And of course, we don't care about the coefficients. Blah, 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 blah. So let's see if this is starting. Okay, perfect. Here's merge sort. Split in half. Split them in half again. Split them in half again. And now we have. One, two, three, eight lists of size one instead of one list of size eight. But hold on, all of these things are, are sorted lists. So just do the merge algorithm. That was order one time. Or, or that was that was a linear time. That was linear time. That's linear time. And that's linear time. Now do it again. Merge those two sorted lists there. Well, one and five, one obviously first, then three, and then five and then six. And then we're going to do that for the other two lists of size two. Four, obviously, and then seven and eight. And then lastly, we're going to have to merge the two lists of size four to make our one list of size eight. So the one and the two, well, the one, the two and the three, well, take the two and the three. Wait, are these actually the same two lists that I, no, they're not. I was wondering if these are the two sets of numbers I used on the previous slide, but they're not. I mean, they're one through eight, but they weren't broken down the same way. So that's great and all. So let's talk a little bit about the computational complexity of this. So if I go here, let's think about this for a second. So we just saw an example with eight numbers, right? But imagine I have some collection here of size n, right? And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, I'm going to split it in half and then have the chunk over here and it's going to be n over 2. And then I'll have the chunk over here 
that's n over 2 as well, right? Because we, we just split it in half. And then we're going to split them in half again. And then here we'll have some group that's n over 4. Another group over here that's n over 4. These are, of course, not quite to scale, but that's okay. n over 4. And then n over 4. And let's think, how, like how much work is it to split this in half? Well, I'm just going to have to look at each of the, first I'm going to look at the first half of the n things, and then the, the second half of the n things. Like to split these things into two separate like, like collections, it's linear time. So this right here, to split, I mean, that's, that's linear time, order n to split. And then if we go here and we want to split this one, well, it's like... We know there's n over 2 things we have to split over here. But we also have n over 2 things over here that we have to split. For a total of how many things are going to be split on this level of this tree. Well, a total of n things are going to split. So order n. And then down here, well, we have four sets of n over 4. Well, that's just a total of n things that are going to have to be split across these four groupings. So O n. And I could keep going. Dot, 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 until I have lists of size 1, 1, 1. one okay pretend there's a total of n of them so here we have one list of size one but down at the bottom we've got n lists wait i think i said that wrong we have one list of size n at the top and we have n lists of size one at the bottom okay so this whole process of splitting is order n each time we need to do like each layer of splits. But how many layers of splits are there? Well, we remember if we have n divided by 2, 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 until we can't do that anymore, until we're out of integers. What is that relationship? Well, we remember multiple multiplications is like the exponent. Multiple divisions, that's the log. And because we're dividing by 2, the number of layers here is log base 2 of n, proportional to that. So that's the current situation. Now, of course, all we've done so far is split. So I'm going to, let's just make this way bigger. Okay. So now I have n lists of size 1. So now, if I do merging, if I merge these two things together, we will now have n over 2 lists of size 2. And then this one and the other one it's got, 2. And then whatever, whatever, 2. So now, so this, we're done. We hit the bottom. Now we need to start merging. We have n lists of size 1, and every single one of those lists is sorted by definition. And we know how to sort, or pardon me, we know how to merge two sorted lists in linear time. So doing all of these, all of these merges here, is order n. Now here you're going to be like, well, you know, it's only two. Yeah, but there's a total of n of them that we have to merge. And then I'm going to do that again to have n over 4 lists of size 4 and so on and so on. And then that's going to keep going until we end up with something like two lists of size n over 2. And eventually we'll end up with one list of size n. And at each layer, like if I had to do the merging of this and the merging of this, how much is that in total? Well, there's a total of like n things here. So that's just order n for that merging. 
and the previous layer it's order n as well and the previous layer it's order n as well and so on 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 all the way till we get to the bottom of the n list of size one now we know that the splitting was linear and we know that the merging is linear but how many merges do i have to do well how many layers are there in this tree relative to n well we just saw you know it's like here we're doing multiply by two multiply by two or like g going that way it depends on which way we look but the number of layers is going to be log base two of n so the total amount of work is what well, we have to do up here how much work is being done well we have to do a linear time operation for each layer and how many layers are there log two so for the top bit for splitting it's going to be a total of n how many times log base two of n times right because we're doing a linear time thing this many times but then how about the merging well we need to do an I'll, oh, no, 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 I'll just do it this way. And the merging is linear. And how many times are we doing it? Well, how many layers are there? Well, log base 2 of n. So the total amount of work is log n log base 2 of n plus n log 2 of n, which of course is 2n log base 2 of n, which of course is big O, n log n. A lot of times we don't even put the little base there because it's it's a given in computer science. Blah, 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 blah. Did that make any sense at all? Because I will let you know that this is an advanced idea that really is outside the scope of 162. So if you're left scratching your head thinking that that was the most compli complex thing you've ever seen, don't worry, this is outside the scope of this class. I'm just showing you because I think it's interesting. Now, are there any questions about that? Here, let me put this there. Any questions about any of that? We're all good then. Okie dokie. So that's merge sort. So the, like, the two big ideas for merge sort was lists of size 0 and 1 are sorted. And I can merge two sorted lists in linear time to create a bigger sorted list. That's the important bit. Now we'll talk about something called quicksort. And here's the idea. Actually, I'll see if, I've, if the slides are any good. Quicksort. Hmm. No, quicksort slides are bad. All right. So here's the idea between quicksort. And I'm going to word it to you in the most uh, recursive way possible. Imagine I've got this giant list here. Here, let me see if I can. Uh, yeah, I've got this giant list. Okay. And here's what I'm going to do. Listen carefully and tell me if, if you buy this or not. Remember, a list of size 1 is already sorted. And a list of size 0 is already sorted as well, right? And would you agree that if I had a list over here that is all the numbers, yeah, that are all the numbers between 0 and x, and they're sorted. I've got a list of all the numbers that I have between 0 and x. No number in here is larger than x. Okay, so if I have this group of numbers, and they're sorted, and I have this other group of numbers over here that are sorted, but they're all bigger than x. Maybe they're equal to x, but they're all at least greater than or equal to x, and they're sorted. So all of these numbers are sorted, and they're less than x. All of these numbers are sorted, and they're bigger to x. Would you agree that if I do this, it's just a bigger sorted list, and everything's still going to be sorted? Would you agree with me? I hope you do. I see one answer. What do we got? Yes. Okay, good, because that's like, that's obviously the case. Because if all these numbers are less than these numbers, and they're in order, and these numbers are bigger than these numbers, and they're in order, if I put them together, they're just, it's a bigger list of all the numbers that are sorted. So, here's the idea between quicksort. I'm going to take my list of unsorted numbers, randomly pick one of those numbers. I'm going to call it the pivot. All right? 
And I'm going to then use this pivot that I select and put all the numbers less than the pivot over here and all the numbers greater than the pivot over here. And I'm going to sort them. Then, once they're sorted, all I have to do is take them and put them back together. Would you agree? Say yes. Yes. Now, I'm, will I'm willing to bet, raise your hand if you're like, okay, yes, I agree, but it feels like you skipped a bunch of steps there because you just said like, oh, you know, select a pivot, split them in half, and then sort them and then put them together. It sounds like I definitely skipped some steps there. Yeah, of course. You, I, you hear the boops. Yeah, I skipped some steps. But you want to know what those steps are? Oh, okay. So if I need to sort this smaller list, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select a pivot, put everything less than over there, everything greater than over here, sort them, and then put them back together. But how are you going to sort them? Well, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take that smaller list, pick a pivot, split them, sort them, put them back together, and then you're done. That's how I get that sorted list. And how are you going to get that sorted list? Well, keep doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. And if we have a finite number of things, I can only keep splitting these things down a finite number of times. I'm going to end up getting lists of size one or zero, right? And if I have lists of size one and zero, I know that they're sorted. So if I have a sorted list and a sorted list, I can put them together and they'll still be sorted. So let's, let's, let's talk about this one. Pardon me. I just had my voice crackle. Uh, here. Okay. I'm going to just pick some random numbers. Uh, seven. No, 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 no. And let's make this big. Seven. Four. Two. One. Eight. Five, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What am I missing? Six. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to randomly select one of these as a pivot. Okay. I'm going to select the four. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the four. And this is going to be my pivot. And I'm going to make it in like a list of size one, whatever. And we know it's sorted. Then I'm going to go and take all the numbers that are less than four, put them over here. So, okay, seven, no, two, one. So we've got two, one, and three. And then all the numbers that are bigger than four are going to go over here. So we've got seven, eight, five, and six. So I'm going to go over here now and pick a, pick a pivot. Well, I'm going to pick two. Okay, so the two comes down here. And then I'm going to put all the numbers less than two over here, so we've got one, and all the numbers greater than two over here, three. Okay, and then I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna pick a pivot. I'm gonna pick a six, I think. Ooh, I should do this. So I'm gonna pick six. So now we've got six. All the numbers uh, less than six go over here. Okay, we've got the five, and then all the numbers greater than six, Okay, well, we've got the 7 and the 8. I'm going to pick a pivot over here. I know it seems silly, but I'm going to do it. And I don't know, I'll pick the 7. I, it doesn't really matter. So we've got the 7 and all the numbers less. Well, there's nothing there. And then over here, we've got the 8. Okay, so now all I have to do is it's, uh, green. All I have to do is, well, hold on. I know this list is sorted. And I know because it's on the left-hand side of this, like, tree break. I know that all the numbers in this sorted list are less than the pivot. And I know over here, this is a sorted list. And they're bigger than the pivot. So all I have to do is just kind of, like, stack them on each other. So now I have... I take this, this, and this, and I take the list of size one, append it with the list of the, the list of the pivot, which is just one number, and then uh, the three. Great. So now let's go down over here. Well, here I've got a sorted list of size nothing that I append the seven to. So I take the list of size nothing. Okay. 
And then eight, I know eight is bigger than the pivot because it's on the right hand side and it's size one, so I know it's sorted. So I just do that. So now I have the list seven, eight. Now let's go up a layer. So we have the five. Now I know five is less than the six, right? And I know that this sorted list seven, eight, all those numbers are greater than the pivot because it was on the right hand side because all the numbers that were bigger than the pivot went to the right hand side. So I've got this list here. I'm gonna take the five. That's not a five. Append the pivot. Then append the sorted list on the right hand side, which is seven, eight. Okay, great. Now we've got the one, two, three and the five, six, seven, eight. And I've got the pivot. Now I know everything on the left as I worked my way by merging these things or like appending these things together. I know that I now have a sorted list of all the numbers less than the pivot on the left hand side. And I've got a sorted list over here of all the numbers greater than the pivot on the right hand side. So all I have to do is take this one, two, three, the pivot, five, and then the, nope, uh, four, then take this list and append five, six, seven, eight. Wonderful. Isn't that magical? I think that's magical. Now, that's great and all, but let's think about computational complexity because that's what we like to geek out about. So if I have a list of size n, okay, what I'm going to do is, well, if I have a list of size n, I need to pick a pivot, right? So I've got something of size 1 here. Then I'll have something of size n over 2 and then something over here of size like n over 2, let's say minus 1. But we could probably, because, you know, with computational complexity, a lot of times we're like getting those ballpark numbers. We don't have to be that, 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 that precise sometimes. So maybe we can ignore this minus one. I don't know. But then over here, we pick a pivot, one. So over here, I'll have n over two over two. So that's n over four. And then over here, I'll have n over two over two minus, two. wait, yeah, n over two n over four minus one. And then over here, I'll have n over two minus one, n over two minus one. And then over here, I'll have n over, no, n over four, pardon me. Then over here, I'll have n over four, n over two minus one, two minus, okay, let me get this right. I was going too quick. Uh, that's a four. So now I have n over two minus one over four. Or, no, 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 over two. Because I just divide it again, right? And I keep doing this all the way down until I end up with a series of lists down here of size one or zero. Right? One, one. They're all size one, that's what I meant there. So, how much work is it to do a split like this? Pick a pivot and then just go through and just compare and throw them on the left or the right. Well, that's always gonna be order and it's linear, right? I have to look at all the things and then just put each one where they belong, left or right, that's it, it's linear. Now the next layer, well, n over two and n over two minus one work, well, that's, I mean, in total, that's, you know, basically linear. And then so on and so on and so on. So we're doing, for each layer here, we're doing linear work. And again, how many layers are there going to be? Like, how deep down will this list go? Well, you know, although we've got this minus one thing here because we're selecting the pivots, I mean, you will see that at least one branch is going to go down all the way because we don't have the minus ones on it, like the leftmost branch, meaning that this tree is still going to be log base two and deep because it's still more or less the divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, divide by two. So the total amount of work on this side is n times log two of n to get to this state. 
But how much work is it now to do to like combine these things together, to append these lists? Well, for each layer, it's going to be, and then the pivot, and then this, this, the pivot, and then this, uh, this, the pivot, and then this, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, until we get our one last big list again of size n. If we keep doing this, well, first of all, how many layers are there going to be? Log base 2 of n. And how much work is being done in each time by concatenating these lists? Well, it's, it's linear. So each layer is order n again. And we have log base 2 layers. So the total amount of work is going to be 2 n log base 2 n, which of course is big O n log n. Huzzah! So these sorting algorithms are awesome because a lot of the other sorting algorithms we saw, most of the time were n squared. They were quadratic. Where these ones aren't, they have that log relationship. And if you have something that's quadratic and you have something that's n log n, the n log n thing is going to be really fast. Now, did anyone notice in that previous example I had, if I'm lucky, wait, I got to be careful about undoing and paint because that crashed my computer last time. All right. Did anyone notice something sneaky I had done when I, when I gave you the example with the numbers? Did you notice anything sneaky at all? No? See, I ended up cheating a little bit with quicksort because I always picked a pivot such that more or less half the things would end up in the left subtree and the other half would end up in the, in the right subtree. And that's important, that, that like dividing strategy, that divide, 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 divide by two every time. That's the magic of the log, right? That's the logarithmic, logarithm there. But what happens if I pick a pivot such that I really don't get to split it 50-50 in like the like roughly half over here, roughly half over here? I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean with the specific example. So if I have the numbers like uh, 4, 7, 8, 1, 6, 5, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If I get really unlucky and pick the pivot 1, nothing's going to end up over here. And then I'll have 4, 7, 8, 6, 5, 2, 3. And then maybe I get really unlucky again and I pick the pivot 2. So here I've got the pivot one. Here I pick two. So now I end up with uh, over here. I've, oh, here I've got an empty list. Here I've got an empty list. And now here I've got a list that's four, seven, eight, six, five, three. And then I get really unlucky again and I pick three as my pivot. So over here I've got an empty list. Here I've got the three. And then here I've got four, seven, eight, six, five. And then I get unlucky again and I pick four. So we've got an empty list. My pivot's four, and then here I've got uh, seven, eight, six, five, and so on, and so on, and so on. I'm getting really unlucky. First of all, does this remind you of anything that we've seen before in class? Because it should remind you a little bit of something. So we've got the five, over here we've got the empty tree, and then over here I've got seven, eight, six. I heard a boop. What do we got? The degenerate tree. Absolutely correct. It does remind me of the degenerate tree, right? Where basically we have this tree structure, but we're getting really unlucky. Let's do the computational complexity analysis if we're getting unlucky. Well, we do know if I here have something of size n, okay? I pick a pivot that size one, and then over here, I have n minus one things because I've got the pivot here. Then over here, I pick a thing of size one. Over here, this is a list of, uh, it's empty. Here, empty. Here, it's going to be uh, n minus two. Dot, 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 until I end up with something of size one. 
So, how much work is being done at each layer? It's still linear. I still have the, the amount of work being done is still linear. Pick a pivot, look at each element in the list, and put them on the left or the right. I just got really unlucky such that everything ended up here. And then again, I got unlucky. And then again, I got unlucky. And so on and so on and so on until we get to something down to this list of size one. So every time I pick a pivot and divvy this stuff up, it's a linear total amount of work. Big O of N. But now let me ask you, and this, if you think this is a trick question, if you're finding this difficult, you're thinking too hard. How many layers are there in this tree? How many times, if this happens, how many times am I going to end up Pardon me, how many times am I going to end up doing this linear time operation? Any ideas? N. Exactly. Why? Well, well, the N, N minus 1, N minus 2, N minus 3, da, 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 3, 2, 1. Well, that's just, uh, that's just N things in total. I'm basically counting from 1 to N or N to 1 backwards. But there's a total of N layers here. So if I'm doing a linear time operation... N times, well, that's N squared. And suddenly, if we pick this bad pivot, we're in really bad luck. We picked this pivot such that we end up with crap results. So we might get really unlucky with quicksort. But with merge sort, we're guaranteed to have it be N log N. Best case and worst case scenario, it's N log N. Here, it's n squared, because honestly, basically what we're doing in this scenario, does this look, does this remind you of another sorting algorithm that we already saw? If, if we get unlucky, end up picking the smallest thing every time. Does this remind you of anything? Because to me, it looks a lot like selection sort. We just so happen to pick the smallest thing and everything went to the right. Then the next smallest thing, everyone went to the right, and so on, and so on, and so on. So we ended up just getting the smallest thing. Now, it was by dumb luck, but it ends up working kind of like selection sort in the end. So there's that. Now, a very interesting thing, though, is, so let me quiz you. Best case scenario quick sort is n log n. Best case scenario merge sort is n log n. Worst case scenario merge sort is still n log n, but worst case scenario quick sort is n squared. So if I were to ask you which version, which sort would you want to use in practice, which one would you want to use? If you're worried about the amount of time and energy you're using to sort stuff. And no, the answer is not BOGO. Between quick and merge, which one would you pick? Merge, obviously, right? Because you're guaranteed n log time. That's fantastic. n log n, great. However, there are, in practice, on these computing machines that we use, that we call computers, a lot of times quicksort ends up being a little bit better for a couple of reasons. Not always, but in practice, just by the nature of how our systems work. But that only... That matters because of how these computers work. If we did it like we did with the people in Minecraft, if we had 128 people in class and we sorted all of them by height with merge sort, it would absolutely be guaranteed to be better in terms of the number of steps being taken. But as a consequence of how this computing machine works, there's a lot of asterisks involved. But in general, following these sets of instructions within our universe, we are guaranteed that it will at least, merge sort will at least be better than uh, quick sort. So isn't that neat? Right? <sighs> okay, so I suppose right now there's about 15 minutes left. And I've got two ideas we can go into. I can teach you a little bit about heaps and heap sort, I suppose. Heaps are a, a neat way to kind of represent um a tree with an array or and i did this for one of the four lab sections last semester so some people in here may have actually already saw me do this but 
or I can show you a little bit about the basic components and how they work within a computer and the ideas behind them and how we can end up doing anything and everything we want. Which, which one do you want? Do you want to learn about heaps or the bits and bobs inside the computer? I can do a poll. I'm doing a poll. We got to make it a poll. There. Well, three people aren't voting. Okay. Well, two people left to vote. All right. It looks like we're going with heaps. I, oh, wait. Oh, the only person that hasn't voted is me. All right. Well, I was going to go with bits and bobs, but that's okay. So we're going with heaps. All right. Here's the idea behind a heap. Here's how we can store a tree, a binary tree, in a heap. Wait, actually, I think I might have some stuff. Yeah, yeah, heaps. Uh, all right, well, here's what we're going to do. If I have, I want to represent this tree as a heap. I'm just going to draw a tree with some numbers in it. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to draw a tree with letters in it. And we'll have like, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. There, we'll, we'll end there, okay? So now I wanna build a heap of this. I wanna, be, I wanna make this tree an array somehow. I heard a boop. And, oh yes, I know you can't see what I'm doing. Is that what you said? Can't see. Yeah, man. Last class, still messing up. All right, there. This is the tree I want to turn into a heap. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. And of course, this tree looks really nice. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take the letter A. If I've got an array, A, and it's going to be an index 0. I'm going to put B at index one, C at index two. Oh, what the heck? Two, D, three, E, four, F, five, G, six, H, uh, seven, I, eight, and J, nine. So I've got 10 things here. And this is my heap. This is it. I've now made that, uh, pretend this is like the array. These are the array cells, of course. There. I have now represented this tree as an array. Now, of course, you're going, no, you haven't. You just put the letters in an array that's all you did. You can't call that a tree. Well, here's the magic. If we are at any given node i, if I want that node's left child, that's going to be, uh, take your index, I think times 2, plus 1. If you want the right, You'll take your index times 2 plus 2. And if you want the parent, all we have to do is take the index and divide by 2, I think. Or is it minus 1 divided by 2? I think it's minus 1 divided by 2. In fact, I've got slides here. Yeah, i minus 1 divided by 2. Of course that's the case. have to do this first. And because we're doing integer division, this will take care of it for us. So with this fancy math, I can know who's where. So, uh, pre like, don't even look at this tree. I'm going to follow this rule. I'm at, I'm at index 0, and I want to know what its left child should be. Well, it's, it's, zero, it's i, which is 0 times 2, which is 0, plus 1. 
I hear. But what if the number is odd? How does one find the parent? I'll show you in two seconds. You'll 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 see. It's because of integer division. So if we get like five divided by two, well that's that's a two, right? Because integers. Uh, and its right child will be C. Why? Well, zero times two is zero plus two is two. Now B, what's your left child? Well, it's it's I, one times two, which is two plus one. Okay, D. And what's your right child? Well, it's uh, one times two plus two, well, four. And then C, who's your left child? Well, that's two times two, which is four plus one is five. So your left child is F. And your right child is going to be two times two, which is four plus two, which is six. Then D, well, three times two is six plus one is seven. So good. And six plus two is eight. And then E, well, four times two is eight plus one is nine. And then what comes next is four times two, which is eight plus two is 10. But of course that doesn't exist. That's not in the tree. So look, A goes to B and C. Well, that's correct. B goes to D and E, which is correct. C goes to F and G, which is correct, and so on. Now, I realize this is getting kind of jumbled, but let's see if we can find the parent of anyone. So Kim had a question about like, well, what happens if it's odd? Well, first let's do, uh, let's do five. Okay, if I wanna know five, five's parent, well, what's the rule? Do five minus one, which is four divided by two, well, that's two. So F, your parent should be C. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Awesome. And let's see with G. Well, the index is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. And what is 5 divided by 2 if we are thinking about integers? It's 2. I know it's 2 and a half, but remember, when it's an integer, we throw away. We truncate any decimal. So the odds don't really matter because of the benefit of integer division. We can just eliminate the decimal point, which is fantastic. So this is a heap. This is a way we can store a tree as a, an array. And here's the thing. Storing a tree in a computer as a link structure is actually kind of annoying to the computer because we have to allocate memory, we make objects, we got them pointing all over the place. It's crazy. Arrays, that's just this nice contiguous, contiguous chunk of RAM. There's no pointers here. It's just some basic arithmetic to find out where the heck we should be going. So suddenly we've now encoded this tree, a binary tree, very, very, very effectively. Isn't that awesome? It's kind of funny how different containers and, and just different strategies can achieve the same thing. It's a tree, it's a binary tree filled left to right. It's cool, right? So. Why does, why code trees if all we, if we can do that? There's a lot of reasons. Um, because the trees, I mean, they, trees can be a lot more general and there are a lot of other fancy things that we can do with trees where like we can like thread the trees and then have the self-balancing trees, which is perhaps a little easier to do with the tree structures by just changing the pointers. Uh, but this is just showing you an alternative called a heap. And you'll learn more about heaps next semester or next year, I suppose. So isn't that fun? Now there are things called min heaps and max heaps. A min heap is designed such that whenever you add something to your heap, given that we know this math, we can access the children and the parents easy in constant time. But imagine I have this heap and imagine like it is in fact like I'm gonna draw my heap as a tree structure, but just pretend it's in an array. If I have a number seven, the max heap is designed in such a way that the biggest number in the heap will be at the top. Then all that matters is that that's, that number's children are less than the parents. That's all that matters. So if I go and then I wanna add the number like three and then the number, I don't know, 60. There we go. And then we can go over here and then maybe we've got like a, a one. Here we've got a 
for... No, wait, no, what am I doing here? I'm making this sorted. All that matters is that they're smaller. So 1, 2, 11, 14. And, and yeah, there we go. Awesome. Uh, so this is a... What the heck? I'm doing... What am I? Min heap? What am I doing here? It's because I was getting binary trees confused. Let's make this. I've ruined it. I've ruined it. I've ruined the idea of the max heap. So seven. This can be six. Nope. Six. And maybe this can be a four and this can be a five. Uh, right? All that matters is that the big it gets bigger as we go up. Now, if I ever want to add something to the max heap, here's what we do. All we have to do is put it in the next available slot, which would be here, because we always fill left to right. And let's say I put in the number like uh, eight. Okay, well, what's going to happen? Well, whenever you add something, you compare it with its parent. If they're out of order, you swap them. So this becomes the eight. This becomes the one. So now we compare the eight and the three. Oh, they're out of order, so we swap them. So this becomes eight. This becomes three. Then here, if we compare the eight and the seven, well, we got to swap them. Eight. Seven. I mean, we may have gotten lucky. Maybe I added the number two again, and I only would have ever had to have, like, moved it up one slot. Like, if I had a two here, and I was comparing the two and the one. So if I put a two here, and this was the one, I could switch the one and the two. I know there's a two in here already, but there's nothing saying we can't have duplicates. And then the two would stop here. We don't need to bubble up anymore. But when building this heap, whenever we add something in this max heap, how, uh, what's the, to what is the maximum distance anything we add to this heap would have to travel? How many times could we possibly move it up? Log n. Absolutely. Because it's a binary tree. And, the, and we always put it on the lowest level, meaning that the furthest it can ever go is all the way to the top. And if it goes all the way to the top, well, that's a log base 2 of n relationship. Now, we can actually use the idea of a max heap or a min heap. A min heap is the opposite of a max heap. We're the smallest at the top. Um... But what we could do is if I've got this max heap, what I'm going to do is, okay, I'm done. I've got all my numbers in the heap. I built my heap. And how long is it going to work? Well, I have to add n things in there, and at most they can, they can bubble up to the top, or they can, like, you know, work their way up to the top, log n time, like, or, which is log n time. So we've got n log n again to build this heap. Now, here's what I can do is I can take the biggest number out, okay, put it over here, because I, I now know I have the biggest number, but of course, I have this empty thing at the top, so what I do is I put the small, I take the thing from the next, like, from the last thing at added, basically, the last thing in the heap, so it would be the J in this case, Put the 1 here, and then I bubble down. I just do it in reverse. I compare the 7 and the 1. Well, okay, 7 definitely goes up. 1 comes down. I compare, remember this is a 3. I compare the 3 and the 1. Okay, so, well, the 3 definitely moves up, and then the 1 just goes here, and then there's nothing here anymore. So there we go. We have now preserved the, the max heapiness. I'll do it again. Now we know 7's at the top. It's the biggest thing, so we take the 7 out. Do it again. Put the 5 here now because the five there, and then we do a comparison. Well, you know, oh, and also when you do the comparison with the children, you make, you send it to the way that's like the, like the, uh, the bigger thing is. But anyways, point being, this is heap sort. And again, how many things do we have to take out the heap? N. How many things, will, how far could it have to possibly have to bubble down? Uh, well, log base two N. So heap sort, that's another N log N algorithm. Anyways, that's it. That's it for 162. You will see that the exam, of course, has been released. It was scheduled to release five minutes ago. Do you think it reasonably complete the final within two and three? I'll let you decide that. I, I definitely think so. I mean, it's hard to say. I think it's easy. 
I think that if you know what you're doing, this should be trivial. I think if you don't know what you're doing, you're screwed. But yeah, I think you should be in good shape. 